Boom! What's going on, everybody? I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'm back here in the Southside Warehouse for Advantage Diecast. And I did find a train, because if you saw that last video, I was waiting around for another freight train to hop and ride back home. But I managed to find one, so now I'm back here, and I'm going to do something different, something I haven't done in a long time. I'm not going to have any of my slideshow, no whiteboard, nothing. Just me and the toy. And we're going to do a little bit of story. This here, guys, is a very, very old model. It was made back in the mid-80s for um, Allied Van Lines. And this was a stamp steel piece. Now, I remember going back when I was a little kid. This was probably 88, 89, maybe even 1990. When we went to Dyersville, Iowa to see the Erdolf Toy Factory and tour the plant. Of course, that was back when they were making toys right here in the U.S. The die-cast plant was there in Dyersville and the assembly plant was there. And we went to see the assembly plant. Of course, that's where the stamp mill was for these stamp steel trucks. And we saw them making this trailer. It had a great big steel die and then a press mold and in went the uh, sheet steel. They pushed the button, you could hear a kablam as the mold came down and crushed around the metal, lifted up and out came a piece of the trailer. Don't really remember which piece they were casting. I think it was the sidewalls or maybe it was the roof, but it was a piece of this trailer that they were making. It wasn't this run, but it was a piece of this trailer. They've made many, many of these trailers. They did a ShopRite. They've done this Allied. They've done two different ones for Snyder. If you saw in my Snyder video, I put a picture of both of them. They had two different graphics, both on this Transtar. Now, I don't know if they had another cab. I only really ever seen this uh, Stamp Steel International Transtar 2 COE, which is a great cab. But anyway, tour in the plant. It was so cool seeing everything done. And these Stamp Steel pieces, talk about the past. When they would stamp these out, They'd have real sharp edges, so they'd have to send them off to be smoothed out so they wouldn't cut anybody. Then they sent down the assembly line. They pressed. They didn't assemble these like with rivets or anything. They literally pressed the parts together, and they're a real snug press fit. Pretty cool system in order to put things together. And then they're, they were painted. Actually, I believe they were painted first. And then they were assembled, but that could be just the way it was. But anyway, they had the opening doors, and then they made some plastic parts, like the air horns up here and the roof lights. They were chrome, so they were plastic parts. The fuel tanks, the exhaust, the grill, that was plastic. Also, so were the wheels. They had a hard plastic wheel that was pressed onto a chrome rim. And the rim was also plastic. That was fine. I mean, this truck really was, by today's standards, totally, totally not uh, a detailed model. But back when it was made in the 80s, this was a very, very detailed model to be putting on the market. And it was state-of-the-art. People loved these models. They were great. Advertisers, the other big company that did these was Nyland. And the promotional products they could do on these were amazing at the time. I kind of wish somebody would start remaking Stamp Steel and bring these big trucks back because I think they would sell. I know the on the secondary market we see them selling them, so I would say that they would a new runs would sell. But anyway, but anyway, this truck here came from my grandmother. Well, <laughs> she moved from Santa Barbara to Visalia, California. And she had Allied Van Lines move her, all of her furniture, and move from the house in Santa Barbara out to the house in Visalia. And when she did, she went into the uh, Allied place, the local one there, and she saw one of these trucks sitting up on the shelf. And she wanted to buy it for her grandson. That would be me. But 
they didn't want to sell it to her because I think they only had just the one. So she did what grandmas like to do and she worked with them until they gave her the truck so that she would just kind of be happy. They got the job moving it. She got the truck and she sent it to me. And I've had this in my collection since probably 83, 84, 1983 or 84. So it's one of the oldest pieces I've got in my own collection. And because of how it came, I really would never want to part with this. This truck, it's not as fancy as all the DCPs, but it has the sentimental value that none of the DCPs have. And going back to talking about the truck. These trailers, stamp steel, underneath, just a nice steel piece, and a big uh, steel kingpin. They also had a fold-down landing gear. That was something that Ertl did. Nylance, I, I don't ever remember them. I've had several of them, and I don't remember them having a fold-down landing gear so you could set the trailer by itself. No working suspension, but... Real nice axles. This thing rolls great. The duels are embossed with Ertl because Ertl made this truck. Round to the back, it has barn door type doors. Like all models, they don't open all the way. But, tons of room inside. Wouldn't this have been fun to have if you had a dollhouse? You know, your sister had a dollhouse. Fortunately, I didn't have a sister. Had a moving van. No sister, so no doll furniture to move. Oh, well. The graphics on this truck and trailer are just printed out on vinyl decals. And as you can tell, they have faded a little bit over time. But that's okay. I ain't going to worry about it. They did great graphics. They just printed them out and stuck them on. Did a really, really nice job that way. See, the landing gear holds that trailer up just fine. The chassis now, and the cab, they did even a little better job. Inside the cab, they did a full interior, driver's seat, passenger seat, and bunk. There's a bed, there's a bed in the back. But that interior is brown, the steering wheel is black, and it's got hard plastic windows. Graphics on the side of the truck say Allied Van Lines, operated by Allied Van Lines, Inc., Broadview, Illinois. It's got its ICC, Tennessee, and a bunch of numbers on the side. And then the Allied logo. Again, those there are printed out vinyl stickers, and they've faded a little over time. Not all of these Transtars had this upper airfoil, but this one did. And you can see over time the uh, glue is kind of loosened up, and the sticker for the Allied is peeled. But that was... One of the things about the stickers they did, the glue would loosen over time. So that's why we like our paint. The paint does a much better job. Underneath, not much detail, but just enough to make it look like a nice truck. You got to remember when they were making this truck, Winross was king. And this thing here blew Winross's detail right out of the water. Plus, look how big this thing is. It's 16th scale. Well, close. I'm not sure what size trailer that would be in 16th scale. I never measured it out. But it's basically a 16th scale truck and a nice trailer to go with it. See, it has the exhaust stack right there. Very classic of the era. A single exhaust on the passenger side. Go on and hook him up. And there we go. That is the International 4070B Transtar 2 with a van trailer made out of pressed stamped steel for Allied Van Lines. Now, to go along with this, because this is a true collector's piece, it's a very old piece, what you need to do is go on and grab my tips for valuing your collection, and there's a link in the description below to get it. It will tell you what you should really look for that is going to put pieces in your collection 
that add lots and lots of value. And also, please don't forget, you can buy plenty of models from my website, AdvantageDieCast.com, DCPTrucks.com, and FarmToysAndMore.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.